welcome back to my channel. My name is Olivia. I'm super excited because today we are going to be talking about plants. So for this video, I wanted to give you 10 tips and tricks to make your house plants thrive. So if you see me glancing down, I'm just looking at my notes. So the first tip that I have for you is really fun and exciting, and that is propagating. You can make a brand new plant from any of your existing plants by propagating it. Now there's a couple different ways you can do that. One is by water propagating, which is my personal favorite. I have some of my pothos right here. Um, so all you're gonna have to do is just literally stick it in water and you can see that there's roots growing. Um, for this, you'll want to make sure to change the water about once a week if it gets cloudy or dirty, make sure you change it right away. But basically all you're gonna do is you're gonna take some pruning shears like this and you're gonna go ahead and snip your plant in between the two nodes. I like to snip mine on a bit of an angle. Um, and then you're gonna go ahead and take all those strands and put them into a glass of water. You could use whatever kind of jar or vase that you like. Um, cleaned out candle jars are a great option too to kind of reuse those items. So you can also propagate them using the soil method. So for this method, you're gonna to wanna to cut off um, a portion of your plant and you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and just sit it like either in your closet or on a windowsill. You're gonna set it aside for like two weeks. You really want it to callus on the end part that you just cut off. Then once it's callus, you can either plant it directly into soil or you can go ahead and just lay the cutting um, like flat on top of the surface of the soil and make sure you keep the top of the soil moist. You can do that by spritzing it with water and you'll start to see roots growing within a couple of weeks. Once those roots have grown about an inch in length, you can go ahead and put that into your soil and you have a whole new plant. So propagating is really great. It's fun. Um, it's really easy too because you can just set some stuff in water and forget about it. I have this Monstera adensai in here that I've had here for a while. It's kind of a slow growing, like there's not really any root growth. So what I did to, uh, to help that grow along is I've actually placed some pothos leaves in the top. Um, pothos, I forget what the name of it's called, but it releases this um, chemical or hormone that um, helps the roots grow a lot faster. So if you put the pothos cutting in water with any other type of cutting or plant, it'll kind of help to speed up that propagation process. Propagating is great because you can do it with any plant. Um, I have a snake plant in here that you literally just chop up a stem of your snake plant and then you just put it in a jar like this and it'll eventually grow roots on the bottom. And again, I have um, a pothos cutting in here just to kind of help the roots grow a little bit faster. Put that right there. Okay, so the next thing I wanna to talk to you about is repotting. Now, it can be really tempting whenever you get a brand new plant from a nursery to go home, you have a cute pot sitting around you've been wanting to use. It can be so tempting to just repot it right away, take it out of the grow container, but I wanna encourage you not to do that. Um, it's, it's, you don't have to repot them as soon as you get them. Oh my God, Floyd just brought me his mouse. <laughs> so it can be tempting to do that, but I would encourage you not to. Um, the plant might come into a little bit of shock after repotting it, so it's best to just wait. Um, you can wait until it grows out of that size grow pot and needs a, actually a bigger pot. So I just got this spider plant a couple of days ago and I got a cute new pot for it, but I just kept it in the grow pot. Um, and this is actually a really neat hack that you can do. It's so much easier for watering. Um, we're going to talk about bottom watering in a second, but it's so easy to just take this out, stick it into like a container of water and let um, the plant soak up water on the bottom. Um, and then once that dries out, you can just set it back in this pot. And this is also a great way that you can easily change up your pots um, without having to fully repot them. Speaking of pots, 
you're gonna wanna make sure that you choose the correct pot for your plant. So terracotta pots, um, whenever you water them, you might notice that, uh, that the pot gets darker in color as it's soaking up all of that water. Um, terracotta, the material that it is, uh, keeps moisture in and it'll keep the plant that you have there, it'll keep the soil really moist. So that's gonna be a great option for plants like a fern that likes to stay moist pretty often. I actually have this rabbit's foot fern um, in this little terracotta pot right here. And this just kind of helps keep the soil moist because it likes to stay moist, it doesn't like to dry out. Um, that being said, with those plants that are a little bit more drought tolerant, like some palms or snake plants, things of that sort. Uh, you don't, I personally wouldn't recommend putting them in a terracotta pot. Um, I would recommend putting them either in something like the plastic girl pot um, or a ceramic pot. Sorry, my cat's playing with his toy. Um, that way you can kind of let the soil dry out and the ceramic in the, um, Plastic pots will not keep the water in. This can also be really key too because if plant if a plant is too moist for too long, it will get root rot. Uh, excuse me. Oh, that's not a toy. All right, so now we're gonna talk about bottom watering. I'm gonna insert a few clips here because I just bottom watered a couple of my plants today. But bottom watering can be extremely beneficial for plants for a number of reasons. The first one being that uh, whenever you, you place your container of water, or I'm sorry, whenever you place your plant in a container of water or a tray of water, um, it will soak up water from the bottom and it'll wick all that moisture up. And this will allow your plant to actually soak up the water that it needs to. You really don't have to, to worry about over watering in this way. Unless, of course, you're keeping the pot in there for too long. So I would recommend if you're doing bottom watering, you're going to go ahead and sit your plant in there for about 15 to 20 minutes. Just keep an eye on it. Uh, the top of the soil will probably remain dry. But if you stick your finger down in a little bit, you'll be able to feel that it has been watered thoroughly. Um, but in keeping the top of the soil dry, that also helps to prevent gnats and fruit flies and things like that. Also, in that spider plant, like I just showed you, Obviously, if you're gonna be bottom watering, you have to have your plant in a pot that has drainage holes, that way the water can then soak up through the plant. So that's a really great option too, is to keep your plant in the grow pots from the nursery for a while um, and place it inside a separate decorative pot that preferably doesn't have a hole in the bottom. You could even do this with a fern and you could go ahead and just place a very tiny like shallow amount of water in the bottom of the decorative pot then go ahead and place your fern in there or another plant that likes to stay moist that way it has just a little bit of moisture to soak up you want to be careful though because you can overwater your plants but not if you're paying attention to them and not if you only let it sit in the water for like 15 minutes bottom watering also encourages your roots of the plant to grow deeper because the water is on the bottom Versus if you only top water some plants, you might not be watering them thoroughly enough and therefore the roots are gonna be more shallow. And what we want, right, is for all of our plants to be big and beautiful and grow. And that's not gonna happen if they just have shallow roots. So the next thing that I wanna to talk to you about is putting your plants on a watering schedule. Don't do it. Do not use a watering schedule. It can be so tempting to, to think to yourself, oh, I'm gonna water all of my plants every single Monday. So the reason why you should not put your plants on a watering schedule is because your plants are not gonna need to be automatically watered on the dot on this certain date. That's not how it works. You're gonna want to test with something like a chopstick or your finger and just stick it down in the soil. If you stick your finger in it and your finger comes out clean with no soil on it, that means it's dry and it's ready to be watered. If it comes out a little bit wet or with some uh, soil on it, that means the soil is moist and you should not water. It's always a little bit better to err on the caution of underwatering versus overwatering. Just pay attention to your plants. So what I like to do is every week or every other week, I'll just take an inventory of my plants. I'll go walk around, I'll look at them, I'll stick my finger in the top layer of the soil to see if it's dry or not. 
but plants are really good about telling you what they need. For example, this morning I just watered my Fetonia, uh, and this morning the leaves were drooping down everywhere. It was pitiful, it was so sad, but it was telling me, hey, I'm thirsty, I need water. And sure enough, the soil is dry. So I went ahead and watered that this morning and the leaves have already perked up. Um, but just make it a habit. Instead of thinking in your brain, I have to automatically water my plants every Thursday, every Monday, whatever. Just take an inventory of your plants like once a week or even once every other week and um, pay attention to them. They'll tell you what they need. You just have to look for the signs. Okay, so my next tip is about fertilizing. I personally have never fertilized my plants until recently, but you can fertilize your plants uh, using everyday household items like eggs, pasta, rice, vegetables, all of those kinds of things are great for actually making your own natural fertilizer. Uh, so what you can do is if you like hard boiled eggs, save the water that you boiled your eggs in, let the water cool down and just go ahead and water that with your plants. Um, there's phosphorus, calcium, and great stuff in eggshells. You can also boil the eggshells themselves. You can just kind of collect up um, eggshells in a container in your fridge. And when you're ready to fertilize, you can boil the eggshells until they're really soft. You can use that water and then use the eggshells and grind them up. And you can go ahead and put that in your soil whenever you're repotting plants and the eggshells will continue to release all those good nutrients in the soil that your plant needs. Now it's important to fertilize indoor plants specifically because they are not getting all of the nutrients and minerals that they need when they are in an outdoor environment. So because they're enclosed and they're not outside, they don't have access to all these things. So that's where we come in and we can help them get all the nutrients they need by fertilizing them. You can buy some fertilizer too. I will link my favorite one by Fox Farms down below, but um, it's really easy to just make your own. So for any sort of starch or vegetable that you boil, for example, pasta, rice, potatoes, carrots, save that liquid. That liquid is gold. Uh, let it cool down first and then just water your plants with that whenever they need water. This is a great way to be zero waste and save money by also providing your plants with the nutrients that they need. So I wanna talk about soil next. Um, it's really important that you're using a soil that A, has no chemicals in it, especially if you have pets, um, and B, a nice soil that's gonna be nice and aerated, um, and you kind of are looking for a more chunky soil mix for most of your indoor houseplants. Now this can be a mixture of perlite, orchid bark, you can make your own. I've seen plenty of recipes online, uh, but you can also just make sure that you're buying a good quality fertilizer or a good quality soil. My favorite is a Fox Farms, I think it's called Fish Food or something like that. I'll definitely link it below, but it's a nice chunky aerated soil. You want your soil to be aerated. Um, basically what that means is that it has going to have natural like air pockets in it so that when you're watering the plant, the water isn't just gonna sit on the surface and uh, not be able to permeate the soil. But if your soil is nice and aerated, then it's gonna beautifully go down. The water's gonna reach every crevice of that plant, all the root system where it needs to go. And this also is gonna allow for better drainage of your plant as well. So my next tip kind of goes with this, but it's aerating your soil. My favorite thing to do whenever I'm taking care of my plants is use a chopstick. Um, you can use a pencil, a pen, a popsicle stick, anything, but whenever you're about to water your plants, uh, go ahead and just stick the chopstick in the soil all the way down multiple times right around it. Make sure not to damage your plant, but this is just going to create those air pockets and it's going to be super beneficial the next time you water your plants because you don't want your soil to be compact around your plants because that way the water actually is just not gonna get through to the root. And this is something that you don't have to do every single time you water your plants. You can do it once a month. You could do it every other month, just as needed. The next thing I'm gonna talk about is pruning. Um, it's really fun for me to just kind of, whenever I'm walking around taking inventory of my plants, to take a little pair of like pruning scissors with me. Um, and 
this uh, is great because for one, it's just nice to have like a designated pair of scissors. Um, but any of like the brown or crispy or yellow leaves on your plant, a lot of times you can just pinch them off really easily um, or you can snip them off. Don't be afraid to cut off parts of your plant. They will grow back. Uh, I've had, I think I talked about this in my last video of the plant tour, which I'll link up here, but um, I had a Hoya Australis and basically I ended up moving, the plant died. I trimmed off the entire plant, like just down to like a quarter of an inch stem above the soil. And it's been several months, but it's growing a whole new plant. So if you think your plant is dying, don't throw it away. You can most of the time always salvage it. You just have to have some patience, but pruning is gonna help with that. It's also good to get in the habit of pruning off any yellow leaves or falling leaves or droopy leaves that you see, uh, you don't want them. If you just forget about them, they could just sit on the surface level of your soil and kind of rot over time and deteriorate. Also, we want our plants to look beautiful. So get into a habit of just grooming and caring for your, your plants. It smells. All right guys, so my last tip is going to be pest prevention. Now again, this is something that I'll admit I haven't started doing until recently. Uh, I've personally never experienced having any pests with my plants. I know I probably will in my lifetime, but it's good to treat even if you don't see a problem. One of my favorite things to do is to use neem oil. I'll link my favorite below. Uh, it's a great non-toxic option if you have animals, um, but basically you just mist it on your plants. You're going to want to make sure to wipe down any of your plants leaves first, especially they get dusty from time to time, it's fine, but again just kind of uh, reiterate this into your plant care routine, like aerating the soil, checking if it's dry, and then checking if there's dust on the leaves. Dust is going to attract spider mites and pests and everything that we don't want. Um, especially if you have like larger plants with bigger leaves, if you have like a ficus or some larger monsteras, you really want to take care of that. So especially in the winter, spider mites love hot, humid air. So to discourage them from wreaking havoc on your plants, it's a great thing to do to increase your humidity in the winter time. Now, you can do that with a humidifier, I'll link mine below, or you can also do that by um, misting your plants with water several times a day. You can place water in large cups or vases and set it on the floor around your plants, or you can even create like a pebble tray. Take a little tray of water and put pebbles in the bottom and a little bit of water and then set your plant on top of that, and that will also help with the humidity. All right guys, so thank you so much for watching these 10 tips and tricks on how to help your house plants thrive. Leave a comment down below if you have any questions about anything, uh, if you have any other helpful tips or tricks or hacks for any of our plant friends here on YouTube, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.